having to learn to do is this, and I've committed myself to do it, not be mad when I see somebody grab their phone when I say, open your Bible. All right? And I'll be upset when I say, okay, we're fixing to give this morning, and somebody opens their Bible or their iPad, and they fix to give on that. I realize now that this is the way we're going. I may not get there with you. But I know many of you are already there, so I'm just going to hush up and let you do what you do. And, uh, but I, I'm telling you, when this phone thing first started and I, I started preaching and people grabbed their phone, I, it hurt my feelings. I don't, nobody's paying attention to me. So if you see somebody that's gaming next to you, say, that ain't your Bible. That ain't your Bible. You've got to find your Bible on, on, your, on your phone there. So if you have your Bible, we'll, we're gonna, uh, I'll just leave you seated for a minute because we've got a few other uh, we got some scriptures we're going to hit, but I'll be in Acts 17, Psalm 42, and then uh, Hebrews chapter 10. So we've got a lot of places we want to cover. What we're going to talk about this morning is Obed-Edom. Everybody say Obed-Edom. Obed-Edom was from Gath, and the scripture begins to lay out some thoughts here on him. And we've talked about him. You, you know what happened. The ark was coming up the road. Uh, Uzzah touches the ark. The ark was on a cart. The cart stumbles. The oxen stumble. The, the, he touched it. Uzzah dies. David stops right there in the middle of this procession. And again, try not to go over a month worth of teaching that we've already talked about here. They, they took this ark, this, which was the uh, representation of the presence of God inside. And they took the ark and they moved it to Obed-Edom's house. Evidently, that was the mailbox right when Uzzah died, stopped the parade. And they took it and put it to Obed's house. If somebody told you, this thing just killed a man. We want to move it into your living room. Uh, you know, because we, I, I came from a time of bomb shelters and putting class books over your head. Like somehow that was going to help you if a nuclear bomb went off in Alabama. Right? You know, they just, they were trying to get us ready to prepare. So, so it's like taking a nuclear bomb and saying, we're going to put that inside your house and we just want you to guard that for the next until we decide what to do with it. And then you agree because the king said do it. And for 90 days, God's presence radically changed Obed-Edom's life. So he, he became addicted to following the ark. So much so that when the ark was moved to Jerusalem, Obed-Edom moved his family to Jerusalem. He, he did something. In other words, when I tell you that his whole heart was to stay close to the presence. An addiction is when you can't live without something. When you have a compulsion, a craving, an obsession, <clears throat> excuse me, a need, a strong desire to develop a dependency. When, when you want something above all else, even though we often think of it in the negative, it can be a positive. It all depends on what you're addicted to. And I will tell you this. I, almost everybody I've met at one time or another have been addicted to something. You, you've been, you know, I mentioned video games. It is an addiction to many. Uh, I've, I've seen, of course, we, we walk through uh, all type of, uh, if it's drugs, it's always the next fix. If it's alcohol, it's always the next drink. But if it's Jesus, you're fixing to get your fix this morning. Amen. Amen, because that's what we're here for. I can tell you that that fix, that you get fixed on Jesus, can fix a marriage, can fix your finances, it can fix your mind, it can fix your body, it can fix your soul. And when we are addicted to him, we're willing to do whatever it takes to get closer to him. And if I can get closer to him, and that was old bad Edom's thought, I just want to get near, to, if I can get near the ark, I, this thing blessed my house. Now, again, I can't prove all the things I said uh, a couple of weeks ago about it, but it had to happen. In 90 days, his crops come in. His animals begin calving. Uh, he, he, he began to get blessed. People that owed him money began to bring it back. He got inheritance, uh, money, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance. I mean, he started getting it all. He was like he was a part of the little country church. He just getting blessed, hanging out with the presence. Acts 17, 28 says, for in him we live and move. We have our being. In other words, let me back it up on the negative. If, if I wasn't in him, I couldn't live. I couldn't have the life I got. I couldn't move the way I move. I, I was blessed uh, I did take our kids, my grandkids, up to, to a Cheyenne Mountain Zoo. If you've ever been there, it's about 6,500 feet above sea level. The reason it's called Mountain Zoo, it's on the side of a mountain. And I walked that thing all the way to the top, seeing ever lions and tigers and bears. And I went all the way back down. And my daughter looked at me and she said, Dad, you realize you walked this whole zoo? That a few years ago you couldn't even walk and now you're walking? He said, look at that. And now I realize, and I take the scripture, in him we live we move, and we, we are beings. This is who we are. Not doings, but we have our being. Psalm 42, 1 says, As a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. This was David talking. Uh, in other words, my thirst is for you. I got to have you. By the way, 
If you ever get in a whiteout snowstorm with a 70 mile an hour wind, you'll pray. His presence is oh so dear. His presence changes things. I, I, matter of fact, I call this message living in known presence. In other words, you know that you are living in his presence. When you call on him, he answers. When you can sense him, you know he's around. This is Obed-Edom. He didn't want to live without the known presence of God. He wanted to have that with him. Pastor, how do you stay close to God's presence? First, you got to read the word. If you don't love his book, you don't love him. I've been studying. I'm so ready. I'm not ready. I'm getting ready for Muscle Car Sunday. One month away. <laughs> Man, why do we do this to ourselves? The pressure's on. But we're going to deal with thy kingdom come. And I think about his kingdom coming and all the things that, that, that on earth as it is in heaven. How do I know that? It's in the book. I read it in the book. When you do, you know, just as food is for our physical bodies, our spiritual life needs nourishment from the word of God. When you came here today, yeah, it was to get fed. Everybody say fed. Now, I hate when people leave church and go, well, yeah, I'm leaving that church because I didn't get fed. Uh, look, if you're hungry enough, you're going to eat. Amen. I mean, there are things that would not be on my menu unless I was really hungry. Broccoli. I don't care how you cook broccoli. It don't matter. I've seen them fry it, cheese it, put it in the oven, boil it. It's still... Broccoli. And people say they eat it because it's good for them. Anything that makes me throw up is not good for me. <laughs> through the Word, God speaks to our hearts. He reveals His plan to our lives. I get direction through the Word when I'm reading it. So i got to stay in the Word. The Bible is God's love letter to us. Contained in this book are principles for life, wisdom, for dealing with life's issues, warnings, and encouragement. It's all in the book. But you got to get in the book. I've said this for years. Do the book. Get the blessing. Get in the book. Find out. There was a day several hundred years ago you weren't allowed to read this book. You weren't even allowed to look in it. You had to have a priest read it for you. You had to have a higher up read it for you and tell you what it means. I don't think we're so dumb that we can't read this book and find out what it means for ourselves. The problem is we still want to be spoon-fed sometimes. You get in this book. You start reading this book. Uh, start in John. Read the book of John. Then flip back into Psalms. Start looking at uh, the life of David. Get a chronological Bible if you need it to figure out where things are. Second is pray. Just simply talk to him. It's a lifeline to God. Tell him your feelings. He's interested in what we're going through. You got your phone? You can dial this number. It's God's phone number. Jeremiah 33.3. Just dial it up. It says, call unto me. Call me. Hey, call me. Text me. Call me. Call me unto me and I will. you get a live voice on the other end of the line. That's worth calling. And tell you great things you know not of. I've always called it God's phone number. Amen. Just get that in your head. It's, it's easy to remember. Fellowship with others who are addicted to his presence. You know what I found out about addiction? When I was addicted... And I've, I've, I've walked through life of addiction. You know, H, we understand all this. But addicted folk hang out with addicted folk. Man, when I was enjoying liquor, I, hung, my, I never called guys that didn't drink to come hang out with me. They will bore you to death when, you, when you're getting drunk. You want somebody that will get drunk with you. Thank God them days are over. You, some of you are going to have to say it by faith. Amen. That those days are. But you had to have somebody because it's, it's funner when you got them with you. You had to have them around. Same way with serving Jesus. If I got somebody addicted to him, I like hanging out with addicted people that are addicted like he is. So when Obed Edom saw that ark moving, he knew it was moving up the road. He wanted to follow that and hang out with those uh, other people. And I got a whole list of people that he hung out with. You know, the other thing is just stay close to Jesus. Obed Edom's story could have ended when David removed the ark from his house. But guess what? Obed wouldn't let it end there. I'm not going to let it end there. It could have ended for me November the 10th, 1979. I said, well, you know, I got saved that day. I'll just be a good Baptist back up and never do anything else. Oh. <laughs> Did I hurt a feeling? So a lot of us will do that. But that was not the will of God. He wants you to stay in pursuit of his presence. Stay in pursuit of, of that which prospers you. Stay in pursuit of him. Just pursue him. That shows the addiction. He began to serve in the house. First Chronicles 15. Verse 15 says, And the Levites carried the ark of God with the poles on their shoulders as Moses had commanded in accordance with the word of God. 
David told the leaders of the Levites to appoint their follow, uh, fellow Levites as musicians to make a joyful sound with musical instruments, lyres, harps, and cymbals. So the Levites appointed the, uh, uh, Heman, son of Joel, from his relatives, Asaph, from their relatives, the Merites, Ethan, verse 18, and with them their relatives next in rank, Zechariah, Zazel, uh, Shimaroth, Moth, Jehel, Una, Eliab, I guess all the other common names were taken, uh, <laughs> Benaiah, Masela, uh, Mathematic, Mathematics, uh, e e okay, Ilya, let me see if I can find a name I know, Obed Edom. The gatekeepers. So when they got into the place, they said, you know what? You need to uh, find some people to take care of the gate, to make sure they can watch the gate. You know, a couple of guys at one time, make sure the presence is being guarded. We don't want this kidnapped again. We don't want this taken away. So when they went down the list, they get all the way near to the bottom, and somebody brings up, hey, why don't we let the guy that took care of it for three months take care of it again? That's a good idea. So Obed-Edom stayed at the gate. He became a gatekeeper. Obed-Edom learned a powerful principle. The success of God's house and his house were intertwined. He would soon become that gatekeeper. My house, this house, they connected. When this house is blessed, my house is blessed. When my house is blessed, this house is blessed. I'm going to make sure it works that way. So he began to make adjustments. Everybody say adjustments. That was me driving yesterday. See, like every time, I don't care if it's on a motorcycle or in a truck. I drove 800 miles yesterday. I'm going to tell you something. The hip starts working, and you got, you got to adjust. I mean, I'm up under the pedal. I'm leaning back in the seat. I, I, I'm driving like my teenagers. I, I'm just, you know, oh, man, I'm struggling a little bit. Adjust. You got to adjust in life. If you don't, you're just going to keep hurting. That's why you go get adjusted. Some of you can know about that. So he could just, so the first thing he did, he contended. In other words, to toss, to grapple by implication, to defend. Literally, when he began to guard the entrance of the house, when he contended, he began to adjust in his life. I've got to contend for something. I've got to fight for something. I've got to stand for something. If I don't stand for something, I'll fall for anything. So I've got to have a purpose. I've got to contend. And if it means being a gatekeeper, a doorkeeper, parking cars, working inside the church, vacuuming, I don't care. I want to be in the house. I just got to be near the presence. Second, he collected. Not only did he become a gatekeeper, somebody said, you know, he kept it for three months. Why don't we let him take the offering? So he became that. Go to, uh, this Second Kings 22, 4, go to Hilkiah, the high priest, and, get, and have him get ready the money that has been brought into the temple of the Lord, which the doorkeepers have collected from the people. So when you came into the house, you gave the money. What if we had somebody at the door? <laughs> That's an idea. I've never done that before. But what if we met you at the door and just went ahead and took your offering right then? Amen. As soon as you come in, we're we ready for you right there at the door. How you doing? Get your phone out. Text to give. Go to app. Whatever you got to do. We stop you at the door. Be a line of people lined up. Give, give, give. Then we ain't got to do it when we get in here. Anybody's light bulbs going off? Anybody realize that may be more biblical? Hello. So they took it, but they were they trusted this man with the with the offerings of the people, and they made it. So he he began to collect. And third, he corrected. Obed balanced out his life by adding God's presence. Before then, he was just somebody watching a parade. But now that he's got God, he began to balance out. Listen, guys, life is about balance. Learning how to balance your time with family, friends, uh, work, uh, church. All the things, keeping God first, but then balancing out your life. you got to learn to be balanced, because this world is so unbalanced. And when you get addicted to anything but Jesus, you can get out of balance real quick. So it's important to get back into it. Psalm 69, 9, the scripture says, the zeal for your house, it's consumed me. I love the house. I love, when I got born again, I just want to be near the house of God. I was always at the church. Every, when I go to work, but when I got opportunity, I went to the church. I prayed in the church. I hung out in the church. I remember throwing a sleeping bag in the back of my 72 Dodge Charger and sliding off Wheeler Mountain in a snowstorm just to get down the mountain on a Saturday because I knew if I didn't get down the mountain, I wouldn't be able to go to church on Sunday. And I called the pastor and I said, that little house next to the church, that little that y'all call a parsonage, which is now a children's church, do you mind if I throw a mattress in, a, 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 a pallet in there and sleep? Go ahead, son, if you want to. That was my passion. 
And when you got a passion for the house and you just want to be near the house and be with the people of the house, it begins to shift your life. You begin to volunteer. You'll volunteer with the children, the youth, the adults. You'll pray with people. You play in the band. You clean up the property. You visit the home and the hospitals. You begin to mentor other kids around you. You give advice. You do mission work. You rebuild. You cook. You serve. Anywhere you can. What happened? I'm addicted to the house. I got to have this. God wants every member to be a minister. One of the biggest fallacies was we got ministers and then you got people. The scripture teaches you are a minister. You are somebody that lays hands on the sick. You, I, I, and I do love when you come to me and ask me about praying for people like that. But I'll also tell you this. There are times I need your prayers. And I look at you as a minister. And I believe you can pray. You can anoint with oil. Amen. You can go out and you can share the gospel. The one thing, we got decline going on right now. There's a decline going on in America like, like we've never seen. You say, what do you mean, Pastor? I see churches everywhere. They're dying. They're dying. They're folding up the doors. Amen. They, they, they're closing churches everywhere. I, I, I don't even know the stats on it. But the crazy thing is, in the, in the Middle East, revival's breaking out. In China, revival's breaking out. There are people just, it's amazing what's happening. They're not, they're not uh, moved by apathy or prosperity. And this is what I can tell you, because we mentioned this in the back room a while ago. Uh, and somebody said, well, one of the things is we're so prosperous that we've forgotten God. I promise you, if you get connected to the presence that made you and you understand this is what made you prosperous, this is what blessed your life. Amen. That he in him we live and move and we have our being. And you connect yourself to this here. My friend, I promise. Not a box, but the presence. And I say, God, if I got your presence, even if I prosper, I promise you I'll never forget you. This is the issue. Because Obed prospered for three months, but he wouldn't leave the ark. He wouldn't leave the presence. But we get apathy. We got so many diversions. We got so many places we can go and do. And so you have to addict yourself here to this house. You got to connect yourself and say more than anything else, I want to be here. How do you do that? You got to grow in it. The scripture teaches us this. The main thing, like Obed Edom, is to remain. John 15, 1. The vine and the branches. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Jesus sharing a parable. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will even be more fruitful. Now, as we're walking through this, I've taught on this for years, that there's, God wants you to have fruit. We'll use the analogy grapes because that's really kind of where we're going here. The, 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 the branches come up, the vines come up, the branches come off of it, and then from the branches are the grapes, and you have grapes. If it's pruned, if it's pruned, if it's cut back in the wintertime or at the right time, it's going to grow much fruit later. Many times in our life, we don't like pruning. We don't. I can promise you we don't. How do you know, Pastor? Storage buildings. We all got one. Some got two. Some of you got, you, we, we don't like getting rid of stuff. We don't like removing things. We got movies about hoarding. We got all kind of things that go on in our life. It, we, but, but in our own personal life, God begins to prune things back. He begins to cut some things back. Saying, now, you're watching too much of that. You're doing too much of this. He begins to cut you back again because he wants some time with you. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me. And I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So the scripture goes from fruit to more fruit to much fruit. And let me just tell you this. Let me back away from the individual. Let's look at the church. Every church should be bearing fruit. Every church should have new members, people growing in Christ, people breaking addictions, marriages getting stronger, kids are acting a little bit better. Amen. The dog's obedient. The cat's gone. Everything is better. It's just good life. She ain't here. I can say it. Amen. So, so, so here, here it is. It's important that, that I remain in him. In remaining in him, things begin to get fruitful. What happens is we get a little fruit and we stop. God wants you to have fruit. More fruit and then much fruit. He's always after more. He doesn't just back off. There's not a time in your life he's going to back away and say, Ah, you got enough grapes. No, he wants you to have enough to share with somebody. So there's fruit, more fruit, much fruit. And here's what I've, I've seen in people's lives. Well, the more they get addicted to him, and maybe that, that may be a wrong word to use this morning, but I don't think so. But the more I'm addicted to his presence, i got to have it. Everything about him is, is, is something that sustains my life. The more I'm into this, the more fruitful I become. And the more fruitful I become, watch this, the more I bless him. The more he's honored by what I've done. So it's important. God, God says uh, he lifts us up. You know, it was a kind of a bad translation. It says he cuts you off. 
It's never the will of God to cut you off. The issue is he wants to lift you up off the ground and get the dirt off of you so you can grow more fruit. If he doesn't lift you up and shake the dirt off, then many times we get in trouble. Amen. We'll stay there and we'll rot. God prunes us. He cuts us back because of self that we may be more fruitful. In other words, we begin to shift our priorities. You can't get addicted to this house unless you shift your priorities. Oh, you know my priority is, Pastor? I'm a CEO. Every Christmas, Easter, and other special occasions, I show up at church. And that's a little bit of a priority, but it's not the main priority. Amen. The main priority is to get addicted to it. God has been the one initiating the change now. Now he says, abide in me. You know, when we talk about, I've called it the secrets of the vine. If your life consistently bears no fruit, God will intervene to discipline you. If your life bears some fruit, God will intervene to prune you. If your life bears a lot of fruit, God will invite you to abide. You remain more deeply with him. When you abide in him, that's the touch point between the vine and the branches. Here's the connection where life-giving nutrients in the sap flow through the developing fruit. It's only hindered by the circumference of the branch where it meets the vine. In other words, you have everything to do with how big you want to become in God, how much you want to grow in him. That means the branch with the largest, least constructed obstructed connection with the vine is abiding the most and will have the greatest potential for a huge crop. It's just common sense. If I look at that and I say, look how big that, that branch is coming out from that vine, surely that's going to be the one with the most fruit because it has more flow to it. Abiding with him is not about doing more for him. Well, I, just, I, I know, Pastor, I'll show up, I'll do this, 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 this. That ain't it. Abiding in him is being with him. What did I do this week? Can I tell you? I just bead with people. I bothered them. I just showed up. I called him and said, I'm here. Come get me. I just hung out with people. There's something about just hanging out with people. Hanging out with people that are addicted to his presence. Abiding is not about doing more. Abide to remain, to stay closely connected, to settle in for the long haul. So an ongoing vital connection with him will directly determine the amount of supernatural power in our lives. It's living in known favor. This man, Obed-Edom, would not leave this box. He, and I don't, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but he, he would not leave it. I got to be near it. I believe as a gatekeeper, he stood there by the gate, and every time that door opened up, he peeked in at a seat of presence. He backed up. It was like him and God had this thing going on. God knew he was outside the door. He knew he was gathering offerings. He knew the man was protecting him. He knew everything about Obed Edom. There was something about it. His life changed. Those three months shifted everything in his life, his wife, his children, everything in his life. It's not a suggestion to abide. It's a commandment. Abide in me, I'll abide in you. You ask what you want, I'll give it to you. Stay with me. Stick with me. Don't walk away from me. Abiding. Uh, David, I see you've been in the back. When the cancer hit you, you had throat cancer, you meant now you have no, no cancer. I mean, God is here. And you walk through these treatments, and you walk through. I saw the mask you had to wear and the radiation and all the things, that, the, the, the nastiness that it did to you, the, the hurt and the pain and the losing weight, all that. But something shifted in you, son. You begin to abide in him. You know, there are crises in all our lives, and it will drive us either to him or away from him. You can get bitter, you can get better. And when, in, in David's case, abiding in him saved your life. Amen? Amen. And this is what you got to see when we abide in him. And watch you. But, Pastor, I ain't worthy. I'm a sinner. I'm Obed Edom, the red slave. I, I don't, I'm, I'm from Gath. I'm from... Uh, I'm from Cloverleaf. I'm from Pasadena, Stinkadena. Now, God bless me. And God said, all I want you to do is abide with me. And if you'll abide with me, whatever's mine is going to be yours. Amen. So flowing from me into you, in him we have our life and our being. I'm going to flow through you, and you're going to have fruit. Many have become experts at serving God, but remain novices at being his friend. Many can serve him. They serve him out of political things. They serve him out of uh, fear of judgment. They serve him out of obligation. But you ever become a friend of God? Everything changes. Everything shifts in your life. Now it's up to us. We have to act, decide, stay connected. Amen. And the scripture actually says in, in verse 6 there, in me, you, uh, without me, apart from me, you can do nothing. You're going to wither. So he picks them up to bear fruit. Obed, learn the secret. Abide. Hang out with 
being here. Abiding is all about the most important friendship in your life. Psalm 42, 1, again, as the deer pants for the streams. John 15, 9, remain in me. In abiding, you seek, long for, thirst for, wait for, addicted to. So when I'm reading this, abiding sounded like a, a, a verb. It's, it's pressing in. It's going forward. It sounded again like, again, the word addiction. Uh, to seek, to long for, to thirst, for addicted, to wait for, to see how, no love, here and respond to a person. In other words, I'm waiting on a signal. I'm waiting on direction. I'm hanging out with you so I can get it. I actually, in the next service, I have a, a, a minister friend that's going to show up at the next church. He called me. I hadn't seen him in about a year. He, he called me up and he said, Pastor, I just don't want to come over and hang out. I need direction. I just need some direction. I said, we'll do it. Come over. We'll pray and ask God. Because the whole issue, again, is not me telling you where to go or what to do. But what did he say do? Where did he say go? Amen. One thing I ask of, David said, this is what I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the, the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. David had the same spirit in him that Obed-Edom had put inside of him. He wanted to set time apart to build relationship with his Savior. Amen. He knew that God's word was to him. He made it personal. He talked. He listened. He wrote. You, you got to write, write down your disappointments, your celebrations, your confusions. And I say that for me because I need to do that more. I start a journal every January 1st. Don't ask me what happened January the 2nd. Because I, 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 got, I got good intentions, but I just don't keep it going. So I have to start remembering to write down. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, said, Pastor, how many funerals have you done? I said, I don't know. I haven't counted them. But on my shelf, I got a stack wider than I can stretch my hand of old bits. And those are the ones I've done since the flood. Because I lost the other ones during the flood. I have a funeral this week. I got a wedding today. I don't keep wedding stacks. <laughs> These are pretty permanent. <clears throat> I got I to get it cut. Hey, jo Josiah, hey, get up here. I, I know, I know. When you abide, you break through. We, we need a breakthrough. To do that, you've got to stay attentive to him. You've got to listen for him. You've got to pay attention to him. I believe, first off, well, you know what happened today, Pastor? God moved. No, you moved in with God. God's always moving. He's a mover and a shaker. I know what you meant to say. It's almost like saying the sun rose. I mean, no, the sun didn't rise. The earth turned. But nobody gets them and say, man, the earth's turning right now. Look at that. You know, I saw earth, earth rise this morning. The earth set. It doesn't sound right. Amen. So, so we say things to make them, because that's what we sense, that God moved. But what happened is we moved with God. We abided with him. We got closer. Psalm 92, 13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Hear that? Hear that, Donald? See that, Donald? Okay, okay. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. I pastor people of all different ages, but the ones I do love and adore in here are those who have made it through life. We call them the gray hairs. I don't, I don't want to be mean. Some of you got gray hair. You just covered it. Uh -huh. They shall be fat and flourishing. That word fat there literally means prosperous. To show that the Lord is upright. He's my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. If I stay planted. If I get planted. How do you get planted? You got to get seed in the ground. You got to stay in the house. Psalm 84.4. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Psalm 84.10. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. What are you out, Obed Edom? I'm a doorkeeper. I'm not the preacher. I'm not the worship leader, but I'm a doorkeeper. Amen. Amen. I take care of this house. This is my house. My, wife, my God, in the house of my God, that dwell in the tents of the wicked. I would rather be right here. Obed Edom, my friend, was living in known favor. Stand with me. He just wanted to be near the favor of God. He, he knew it. I'm near his presence. If I'm near his presence, I'm near his favor. Hallelujah. 
abide in me. I'll abide in you. What is he saying? Would you take the first step, please? Would you take the first step toward me? Would you abide in me? I'll abide in you. And, and we together will bring forth fruit, more fruit, much fruit. Fruits. Love. I see your love hanging there. Joy. Love, joy, peace. Long-suffering. Gentle. The only time you're gentle is when you didn't have to be. That's when gentleness is noticed. Some people can be gentle at certain times, but then there are times people being mean and hard. Can you just be gentle? Can you give a soft word and turn away wrath? Can you not let it be about you? Would you quit trying to defend your rights? Well, I, I'm, I'm mad because... And yeah, 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 yeah. Can't you just swallow that, bury it, forgive it, let it go? Can't you just apologize? No, I got to say why I'm mad. Then all you're going to do is force another wall up. Fruit, gentleness, meekness. It's not weakness. Meekness is strength under control. I can whoop your butt. But I'm not. Fruits hanging. Fruits hanging. All the fruits. And what do they do? They equal people. The heads bow for a moment and the eyes closed. It is my joy, my honor, my privilege to pray over you this morning. God, we want a church that brings forth fruit, more fruit, much fruit. Would you convict us about our addictions, God? That we become so addicted to you that everything else just begins to fall off. It becomes pruned away. It's something that is not going to destroy my life. I just want to be close to you. I want to hear your heartbeat for this world is dying. God, I know soon life will be over for this vessel I live in. And when it does, I want to hear the words, good and faithful servant. I don't have to hear great. I don't have to hear best. Today, I'll settle for good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. God, that's what we want. So I lift a blessing over your people. I ask, Lord God, that right now, they know if they've done wrong. They know how to repent. But Lord, I pray for all of us to bring forth fruit. Matter of fact, I command it in Jesus' name because the Word commands it. Fruit, more fruit, and much fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. If you relate to this Word, give God a praise in here. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Amen. What we're going to do this morning is, I'm going to let you go back outside and get your offering and come back. We're going to take it at the door. <laughs> now, I'll be seated. We'll be nice. Our servant leaders will be going, well, then what do we get to do? He want to be a part of the offering. Amen. You guys have come forth. I thought Justin was preaching this morning. <laughs> Looking good, man. Let me also mention, he is single. <laughs> Just want to throw that out there. Hard worker. Full of integrity, great character. <laughs> That's funny. I'm for you, man. I'm for you. It's live. Yeah, I mean, you're going to get... This thing goes live to the Philippines, everywhere. <laughs> Put that camera on my man here now. Put that camera on my man here. We're looking for... It doesn't have to be a mail-order bride. I'd like you to get to know her. Oh, <laughs> I love this house. For this house to, to sustain itself, we all have to become tithers. We can't, can't make no apologies about it. We've got to believe God for it. We've got to see our, our finances shift because we're in covenant with Him. My tithe says I'm in covenant with Him. And not only do I love His presence. And the neat, neat thing is I, it's not a demand. It, it is a command in Scripture. I believe that. But God allows us to lay it aside and give. So notice, as you're giving, 
you're blessing this house. The leaders that we have here, our missionaries. The more we're able to do, we won't be able to have to take up extra things as we move toward the car show. Amen. Just be a tither. Learn how to do that. If you need to offer an envelope, lift your hand. Our servant leaders are coming to you. Easter is upon us. It's five weeks away. And it's good to reflect upon this week to see how we're heading toward this. Understand Christ's purpose, his desire. You know, it's, it's on us. So a lot of our thinking has to start shifting. I love the cross. I love the cup. I love Gethsemane, Golgotha, Gabbatha, the guest house, the guest chamber, all of those things that go for the life of Christ. Look forward to teaching as we move through that. Amen. David, love you, man. You did a great job. Y'all give David a hand for Tuesday night. I'll be here Tuesday. Would, would love to have many of you that can come. I know sometimes it's kind of hard to get here, but I'd love to have you show up at church. I promise you'll be good. I'd like to thank each one of y'all for the support that you've given me through this week, the phone calls, the emails, the hugs, uh, the me Facebook messages, and the passing of my dad. Um, he was a good man. He taught me to be strong. And I just want you to know that you're my family, too, and I really appreciate everything that y'all have done for me this week. Thank you. Miss Marie makes it easy on us. Amen. She's always part, always helping. Appreciate you, ma'am. Uh, from Hard 17, did, did you guys already ask for a tithe and offer? Okay, I, I just want to make sure. No, no, I mean, just in case somebody missed, if you need one, you let you go ahead and lift your hand. They will make their way to you. March 17th, Lift Ladies Bible Study today. Okay, today. Uh, see, you know what I like about this is it always teach me what day it is in, in the month, you know. Every time I do it, I'm like, oh, okay, March 17th, there you go. March 22nd. This Friday, we will. Last week, I was like, no, nah, that doesn't seem right. It is Friday. And uh, if you can make it, come hang out with us. It'd be a lot of fun. Uh, just, yeah, 80 kids. 80 kids this week. Um, and then, uh, guys, this is just another place to get plugged in. Just another place to, to meet us, talk to us, find out what we're all about. That way we can find out what you're all about. Amen. Uh, March 31st, clothing ministry and Tating Pantry will be open. That's on every fifth Sunday of um, April 1st, we got your six uh, military and spouses. Guys, if you've ever been in the military, um, it just gives you opportunity for resources. April 5th through the 7th, Jewels for Christ. See Miss Diane Spurlock. Um, she'll be in the back. There is a sign up in the back, okay? Uh, it, it really is an incredible thing. Um, and if you know anybody that's struggling in life, that's a, a lady, I'm telling you, get them there. Help them pay for it, whatever it takes, because I promise you, the discipleship that happens in that place will change their life. Um, April 14th, Muscle Car Sunday. It's already here. I mean, we got a month, and it's here. April 17th, Easter egg donation. April 17th is the last day. Guys, any any Easter eggs help? Uh, and I can say this. My kids, they run around out there, and they get excited. But all the kids in the house are blessed for a few dollars. So if you guys can just donate a few dollars, uh, you really do change the way those kids perceive Easter. And yeah, it's it's a goofy little tradition, but the truth is they're in church. A lot of these kids will not come to church. Again, CEO. These kids are CEO because mom and dad's CEO. You're blessing them, and you're giving them a good taste in their mouth about what church really is. Amen? Today we're believing God. For, oh. Uh, That's right. Mm -hmm. They've already, they've already, you know, they've got established many weeks or twice a month, whatever. Again, let me see the phone. So when we do this as we give today, hold the phone up. <laughs> <laughs> the way Pastor knows. <laughs> Jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and return, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom.